have type 2 diabetes, people blame themselves, other people blame the person with diabetes. They, they have all sorts of preconceived notions about who gets diabetes. So why don't we <clears throat> each take a turn talking about why that's a myth? Well, let me talk about the fact that what you're saying is a reality. People judge themselves, they are judged by others. That is a psychological barrier that we face in dealing with type 2 diabetes. And then I'll let Dr. Kushner talk about why it's absolutely wrong. But you're, you're quite right. People feel like folks look at them and say, this is, a, this is a disease of choice. You chose this by being lazy. You chose this by not watching what you eat. You chose this by sitting on the couch and <clears throat> not caring enough or having enough energy to get out there and do what you need to do to be healthy. And a lot of them believe that about themselves, so they get down on themselves, and that's not motivating. You think, well, then that's going to motivate them to get up and go. No, it doesn't. It makes, them, it makes their self-esteem and their body image go down even worse. And, and it shouldn't be this way, but body image and self-image go up and down together. I'm not saying that's, that that's what it should be, but it is. If our body image goes down, our self-image tends to go down with it. So if they're dogging on themselves about having the disease, their self-image is going to go down and they're going to be less equipped to deal with it. And that's a real bad thing because that is not true. And I'll let Dr. Kushner tell all of our viewers why it's not true because there are so many other reasons, causes, and risk factors for having type 2 diabetes. So let me thank you. Dr. Phil, so one of the reasons that people do put this social stigma on type 2 <clears throat> diabetics is because it makes them feel better. I won't get it because I'm not lazy and I don't <clears throat> have the risk factors and I don't eat too much and I'm not obese. But it's not that simple. And the reality is that there's multiple risk factors for type 2 diabetes and you could have these risk factors and not get it and you cannot have these risk factors and get it. So the risk factors to review quickly are high blood pressure, obesity, sedentary lifestyle, eating too much, being pregnant with type 2 diabetes, family history is a big one, smoking, and stress can also aggravate it. So that being said, those are risk factors, but don't guarantee that you're going to get the disease. So what can people in your audience do? Well, they can pay attention to symptoms. And I'm sure we'll get there, but the most common symptoms are fatigue, dizziness, being extremely thirsty, being extremely hungry, and particularly being hungry after you ate. So you're not full. That's a warning sign. Urinating too much. And even nerve pain or tingling or numbness in your hands and feet can be some of the symptoms that your audience should watch for. Talk about what type 2 diabetes is and and how the energy doesn't get into the cells to be used. Because I think, you were talking about that earlier today, and I thought that was so clear, so people understand why this does what it does. Okay, well I'll try, because <coughs> I know you're really good at simplifying things, so correct me if I'm not simplifying it enough. The bottom line is, is that when you have type one diabetes, you don't have enough insulin. So it's easy, you get diagnosed pretty quickly, you're given insulin, move on. When you have type 2 diabetes, what happens in the beginning is that you overproduce insulin because you develop what is called insulin resistance. So either the insulin you produce is not a good quality or the, you're not producing enough insulin over time because the body can't keep up. So what, what does insulin do? Well, you have a bloodstream, you eat sugar, the sugar goes into the bloodstream, and the way the body is designed is the insulin is the key into the cells to let the sugar get into the cells, the cells all over, the cells in the brain, the cells in the kidney, the cells everywhere in your body to give it energy. So what happens if that key doesn't work so good? Or maybe that key doesn't work at all? Well, initially, the body will start storing that extra sugar to try to not lose the sugar because it's not evolutionarily wise to do that. So you store that into fat. So people say, oh, you must be very healthy, you're very fat. But in fact, these people are nutritionally depleted. They're not getting energy into their cells. So they're actually almost in a state of malnutrition. And then ultimately, you start urinating out that glucose at such a high amount 
and your body can no longer handle it, which explains the frequent urination and frequent thirst, and it just goes downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs>